Hell yeah. Shit, I was gone for longer than I thought I would be. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hopefully everyone comes back. Of course it would lag the second people actually started showing up. Okay, let's continue. Hi, mine man. Hopefully I don't have technical issues this time. Also, while we were coming back, I think we need another tier. Because I think there's a pretty big disparity between something like Bed of Chaos and things like Leechmonger, which is at least somewhat functional as a boss. But I don't think it was good enough to be in D tier. So, we're gonna create a tier even lower than F tier for what is truly the worst of the worst in the series. I'm gonna try to limit this to only five bosses. Mind man, this is literally the software you told me to use. So for now, I think Royal Rat Authority is awful enough for this tier. The four toxic rats are just so annoying and obnoxious. I don't know if Capra is really that bad, though. I don't think Capra enrages me to the same extent Bed of Chaos and Royal Rat Authority does. I'm gonna try to be very selective for this tier, like only truly the worst. Dragon God definitely goes here, though. I don't know if any of the other bosses are bad enough to go in that tier, though. Oh, I didn't see myself rate Aldia, but I'll put him in D tier. I don't think he deserves F. I'm contemplating putting him in this tier, but I think he can kind of be saved because once you know the layout of the whole arena, it's not as bad. Oh, what the fuck is this? Go away. Okay. Annoying, but funny. Okay, but just last week when I was streaming my first playthrough, I didn't see, like, the side room to go into his arena at the end, so I was aimlessly wandering around for, like, 20 minutes, and then when I got there... Even with, like, 40-plus vitality, he one-shot me with that stupid call-to-whatever spell. Like, the fact that this can happen... I, I don't know. <laughs> I think he might deserve the tier, but you know what? I'll leave it the way it is for now. Oh god, he, like, went away as my screen lagged. What order do you rank the games? We can talk about that later. For now, let's just finish the list. Oh, there he is in F still. Okay, that's fine for now. Oh, hey, I think we found another boss that deserves the what the fuck from soft tier, and that's the gank squad. <laughs> oh my god, fuck that fight. Like, I automatically have a very low opinion of NPC bosses, but a gank of NPC bosses? Are you kidding me, FromSoft? That's a very easy bottom tier, in my opinion. Alina. I think she's a pretty decent fight. The summons can be kind of obnoxious at times, especially if it's Velstat. But otherwise, I think it's actually a fairly solid fight. I'm going to put it in B. Oh god, we're already lagging a little bit. Really? D? You think it's that bad? I disagree. Even Velstat can be managed fairly well. If you just play patiently. I don't know where she went when my computer lagged. Hold on, we have to find Elena. Okay, she ended up in D. We're putting her in B. I actually kind of like that fight. 
Shin, I think, is another B. The summons are dumb. I can see how one would think that, but I honestly never found them that bad. I think Sin deserves B, probably. If it wasn't for the fact that he just flew away too much, maybe it would be an A, but that kind of just ruins the pace of the fight. Shin better than Calami. I actually agree, but I don't think it's like so much better that it deserves a whole higher tier. Smelter Demon. Didn't I already rank this? I know there's a blue smelter. Did I already rank the blue smelter first? I don't know how to tell these two apart. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to put them next to each other. Yeah, I agree. Let's just keep them both in C tier. Even though I generally don't like reskins, the fight's actually a little bit different with the blue one. They have different timings, so... I think I'll let I'll overlook my general dislike of reskins. Hume Knight. Honestly, I think it's kind of overrated, but still decent. I'm gonna put Fume Knight in B. It's above average, but I think it's definitely not A or S. Yeah, F Fume B is good. I think. Sir Alon, the King of the Weebs. Same thing. It's above average, but I don't think it really compares to the gameplay of anything I have in A tier right now. Yeah, I think Dark Lurker is the only Dark Souls 2 boss that's good enough for A tier. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure this isn't a boss. I'm gonna just throw it down here, out of the way. <laughs> Dragon Rider. Ugh. Boring and forgettable, but not terrible, I guess. Why is that listed on here? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I think we might have found the fifth what the fuck from Soft Boss. No, not this. This is decent. I'll put the single tiger fight in C. The gank fight, oh my god. Does it belong here? You know, maybe I'm letting the run-up to this fight on Horsefuck Valley cloud my judgment. I'm not... Uh considering the run-up for this list, even though I subconsciously just did. I think they're a bit obnoxious as a gank. I don't think their attacks really complement each other very well. If we were counting the run-up to bosses, this would be easy bottom tier, but if we're only considering the fight itself. I don't think their attacks really work very well together in a gang fight. This is a gang fight done kind of poorly, I think. The only thing saving it from F is the fact that the second one doesn't appear until the first one's almost dead, or if you're really fast, you can take out the first one before the second one even appears. That saves it, in my opinion, from F tier. If we were rating areas, Horsefuck Valley would definitely be at the bottom. What the fuck is this doing on here? This isn't a boss. <laughs> okay, Burnt Ivory King. I actually don't really like this fight that much. I think the lead-up to it is just too long and obnoxious. I never enjoyed killing the mobs before the king appeared, so that's a deep fight. Yeah, exactly. 
If it was just him, it would probably be C, but I don't like the build-up to it, it's obnoxious. Alright, Ornstein and DS2, just D, kind of boring and forgettable, not really much else to say. Flex, I don't even know how to pronounce it. The Sentry Ball, okay, I'm actually going to put this in C because I think it's good in New Game Plus. The enemies they add to it actually adds quite a lot to the fight. If it wasn't for the New Game Plus version, it would probably be D, but I think the New Game Plus version brings it up a little bit. <laughs> you hate it. Fair enough, I guess. Oh god, the Sentinels. You know what? While I, again, don't really think their attacks work super well together, the fact that it's designed to where you can separate them for the most part, I think saves it and makes it a decent fight. So I'll give it a C. Belfry Gargle- okay, I think we found our fifth what the fuck from soft tier fight. <laughs> this fight is just complete hot garbage. Like, the attacks do not work well together at all. It gets super obnoxious and overwhelming if you don't kill them fast. Just nothing but annoyance from the six gargoyles. Lost Sinner. Same thing as the Sentry. I think the New Game Plus turns it into a completely different fight. If it wasn't for the New Game Plus version, it would just be, meh, whatever, D tier probably. But the New Game Plus version, I think, makes it a completely different fight, and deserving of C at least. Chariot. You know, it is unique, but I don't think it's unique in a very good way. I never particularly enjoyed this fight. The mobs are obnoxious. Rolling through the wheel is super finicky unless you have really high agility. I never really cared for this fight. I'll give it points for creativity at least, but eh, I don't really like it personally. Hey, we're moving on to DS3. Finally, I'll probably have more good things to say about the bosses than bad. <coughs> Alright, Aldric. I think Aldric is a B. The phase 2 arrows are kind of obnoxious, but you can outrun them still. And I think it's overall a pretty solid fight. Yeah, I agree. B for Aldric. Yorm. I know he's kind of a meme with the Storm Ruler, but you can fight him without it, which... I think fighting him without it makes it a decent fight. List is unhinged. Well, hey, I'll go over it at the end and we can fix anything out of place. No, you're crazy. ONS is great. But yeah, I think the fact that you don't have to use the Storm Ruler and it turns into a decent fight there keeps Yorm in C tier. Dancer. I mm, is this B or A? Oh my god, what the fuck is this thing on my screen? Go away. I this is actually a hard decision for me. Spin to win. That booty, though. I think the unpredictable nature of Dancer is pretty good. Dancer A. I, I can get behind that. I really like how you just never know when to attack. Her arena fucking Garbo. Uh... I don't know, I never really had strong feelings towards the arena. I think Dancer is good in A tier. Osiris. Oh, cue the Ocelot memes. 
I never really liked this fight, though. It's just pure atmosphere for the most part. It has a good atmosphere, I'll give it that, but in terms of gameplay, it's kind of garbage. The insta-charge attack is super obnoxious, but other than that, it's just super easy. Just get underneath him, and basically you're invincible. Champion Gundyr. Okay, I actually really like this fight. This is definitely one of the fastest, most aggressive bosses in the series. You have, like, probably the least amount of downtime in this fight out of anything else. And I think it's difficult for all the right reasons. Just a wide variety of attacks with different timings at high speed. I don't think the gameplay is on par with what I have in S tier, but... Definitely a really good boss, in my opinion. Oh, also, as Resling no doubt knows, his weapon is a staple of meta PvP in the game now. Dragon Slayer armor. I think that's a solid B tier boss. The Butterflies in the background kind of bring it down a little bit, but they usually don't play a part in the fight. I rarely ever get hit by the laser. DSA is B. Ancient Wyvern. Oof. I want to limit this bottom tier to 5. Do we... But... Ancient Wyvern is just hot garbage with zero things to enjoy. Also, the plunge attack is just, like, super finicky. I regularly just go through its neck a lot and die. I literally just phase through the neck a lot after the long, tedious run. Is it worse than any of the other five I have here, though? Uh... I don't think it is. I'm going to put it in F. I want to limit this to just 5. I also kind of want to limit S tier to 5. So Manus might move. Manus is definitely the weakest link in S tier right now. But I want to limit the top and bottom to 5. Yeah, I'm certain Royal Rat Authority and Bed of Chaos aren't moving. Neither is the Gank Squad. I could maybe move the Gargoyles and Dragon God if I see something worse coming up, but I don't think I will. But yeah, Bed of Chaos, the Gank Squad, and Royal Rat Authority are guaranteed staying in that bottom tier. Definitely the worst fights. Nameless King. Uh, no, not S. The first... I think the second phase is high A-tier gameplay, but the first phase is kind of like bottom B-tier in my opinion. I think it averages out to being about A. If it was only the second phase though, then maybe I'd consider putting it in S. But I think the first phase holds it back slightly. It's not bad per se, but I don't think phase one gameplay is as good as the gameplay of any of these other bosses. Soul of Cinder. Ooh. Does Soul deserve S tier? I really like the wide variety of attacks in phase one. Phase 2 is not bad, but kind of underwhelming in comparison. I... This is a hard decision. Yeah, biggest moveset. Only B... No, it does not go lower than A, that's for sure. It's 
it's more than just that. I think it's really good gameplay wise too, with the wide variety of attacks it has. I don't know if phase two is good enough though. Like the lightning attack in phase two where it just throws it up in the air, I think is a dumb and bad attack. All you have to do is just run to the side to avoid it, and you have, like, a shit ton of time for free hits. If it wasn't for that one attack, I might put it in S, but I think that one attack alone, which I think is shitty, holds it back. Way better than Manus. Honestly, I disagree. <laughs> Manus is just basically the fastest an enemy could reasonably be in DS1. I feel a lot more pressure from Manus than I do from Soul of Cinder. Like, honestly, the only part of Soul of Cinder that I think has, like, the same amount of pressure as Manus is the Curve Sword phase. I think Manus is better than Soul of Cinder. The tutorial gun deer. I think it's fairly solid as a tutorial boss. I'm gonna put it in C. Not really much else to say. If it wasn't the first boss, I'd probably put it lower because of how fairly simple it is, but it's the f tutorial boss, so I think you have to give it some slack there. And we'll talk about Vort when we get there. Champion Grave Tender. I like the wolf, I don't like the NPC. I think it averages out to being about C tier. I generally dislike NPC bosses. I hate the wolf. I know the charge is kind of obnoxious, but I, I find it kind of satisfying to dodge it though. Actually, yeah, the Frost Breath is kind of dog shit. It's really easy to avoid and gives you a bunch of free hits. Actually, I think I'm going to put Grave Tender down to D. I don't think the wolf... If it was just the wolf and they did like an improved version of it alone, I think it would be C, but... I really don't like the NPC that's there with it. I find it pretty obnoxious and annoying. Frida. Okay, that's an easy S tier. Definitely one of the best fights in the series. Wide variety of fun attacks and whatnot. I think the second phase is a gank fight done very well. The first phase is kind of weak once you figure out the gimmick. But I think phase 2 and 3 are great. Phase 2, I think, is a good amount of pressure for a gank. Their moves complement each other well. And phase 3 is just super anime and cool as fuck. Frida is an easy S tier for me. Demon Prince. Oof. Do I like Demon Prince more than Manus? This is a tough decision. Best duo ball. Yeah, I really like the way their moves complement each other. Oh no. Honestly, with the way Phase 1 is designed, I think it's very clever. And then phase two looks epic as fuck with this. I, I think Manus has been dethroned. Sorry. Manus is going down to A. Yeah, Demon Prince too good. It just has so much more going for it design-wise. And I think it's a really underrated fight. Yep, sorry. Half-Light. 
Uh, you know, if it was only the NPC, I'd put it in F, but I think the fact that it's an online fight and I've had a lot of fun being the boss, I'll put it in D. If you have, like, a good Spear of the Church build and you're fighting, like, three or four players at once, it can be really fun and intense. But yeah, the NPC is hot garbage. The online portion of it saves it from F tier, in my opinion. Madeer. I think Madeer belongs in A tier. I like the fact that you have to hit the head. This boss kicks your ass at first when you don't know to hit the head. Yeah, I agree. Like, at first, it seems really hard, but then once you learn how to do the fight properly, I think it's one of the easier fights to do consistently. Plus, it looks real cool. Also, I think the Phase 2 laser is probably, like, one of the most insane individual attacks in the series. Probably, like, one of the most difficult individual attacks in the series to survive. No, I think it's fairly predictable nature once you learn the fights. Keeps it from S tier, like on repeat playthroughs. I think this is probably one of the few fights in the game that I'd say I've almost truly mastered. Like, if it wasn't for the pursuers in Phase 2, I'd probably be able to do it hitless pretty consistently. Because, like, once you learn it, I think a lot of its attacks are super predictable and easy to avoid. Which I think keeps it from being an S tier. All of these bosses on repeat playthroughs are still pretty hard. But yeah, I think that holds it back from S. Vort. I think he's a pretty good early game boss. Right amount of aggression and whatnot for new players. I'll put him in C. Plus, I think his charge is pretty cool. Especially when they time it to where the music plays up with it. Or like the music picks up as he starts charging. I think that's pretty cool. Wish he had more health. You know, you have to figure that it's going to be new players fighting him that probably won't really know what they're doing. So I think he has a good amount of health for the early game. Oh man, it's mostly downhill from here. <laughs> Curse rotted Greatwood. I never really liked this fight, but I don't think it's bad enough for F tier. Yeah, I think D is a good spot for the Great Wood. Unless you have a thing for popping zits, you're probably not going to enjoy this fight too much. Oh, also it's just constant spins and whatnot are kind of obnoxious. Oh, something that does actually annoy me is the attack where it like rains the acid shit down and you just have to like wait for it to go away. That's just a time waste attack that I never enjoyed. Crystal Sage. I think it has a neat gimmick, actually. Does Crystal Sage deserve C? Wait, wait, the Great What is affected by skulls? I didn't know that. I'd say D. Honestly, I kind of like the second phase of Crystal Sage. I think it's, like, a good but not overwhelming amount of aggression. Yeah, low C. Borderline D, but... Yeah, I think it's at least more enjoyable than things like Deacons or Celestial Emissary. I think low C is good for Sage. Abyss Watchers. I quite like the fight. It has a lot of good ideas. I 
Mm. Yeah, I just don't know if it's gameplay. Is on. Looking at what I have in A tier, I don't think it's gameplay really compares to any of this. It's a good, well-thought-out fight, I think. Phase 1 is unique and interesting, and Phase 2 is solid as just, like, a straight-up conventional fight. But, yeah, I don't think it really compares to anything I have in A tier right now. Yeah, that too, I think, Resling. They're probably, like, the first major obstacle for new players. I do really like the fight, but yeah, seeing what I have in A tier, I just don't think the gameplay compares. Moving on, Wolny- oh god, I hate this fight so much. <laughs> It's not annoying enough to where I'd consider putting it in the lowest tier, but I think it's a pretty solid F. A lot of the times for the third bracelet, it literally just keeps it like right next to itself in the vape, and you just have to wait for it to decide to move. And I've, I shit you not, I've had them just make the sword appear like six times in a row while just holding his last bracelet in the vape. And I literally just stood there and did nothing for like three minutes on end. The fact that something like that could happen is just so annoying and tedious. It, yeah, he does have sick drip, I'll give him that. But as a fight, it's hot garbage. Yeah, that too, Reflections. Old Demon King. I actually quite like this fight. Do I think it deserves B t either high C or low B? Yeah, I agree. Old Demon King actually has some pretty sick moves. Like, it has like a lot of uh, constant counterattacks too. And they're like big AoEs. Like, I remember the first time I fought it, I really struggled to avoid, like, uh, its Hammer Slam and its version of Great Combustion. Honestly, I think I'll put it in B tier. I actually quite like that fight. Also, its uh, Ring of Fire attack is cool and unique, I think. Plus, its fire breath has deceiving range. Oh yeah, I like his suicide attack at the end too, where he just does like a big kamikaze explosion when he's about to die. That's actually a really cool idea that I wish more bosses did, to be honest. He has a lot of good ideas, I think. Yeah, I actually quite like Old Demon King. I'm putting him in B tier. Pontiff Sullivan. Look at all the icons for the Sekiro bosses. I've never played Sekiro, Sek Sekiro, Sek however the hell you say it. So I'm not going to be rating that. I like how all of the bosses look so much different than what we have here, though. Alright, looks like the last one is Pontiff Sullivan, and I think it's a pretty good fight. I'm going to put it in A, actually. Good amount of aggression, wide variety of attacks, a unique gimmick that I think is good for Phase 2. And it gives you an option on if you want to leave it there to tone down the aggression. I don't think it's, yeah, I, it's not S tier, but I think it fits pretty well in A tier. No Emma and Sekiro reaction. Yeah, Pontiff is good, though. Alright, guys, let's reflect on this. Let's see if anything looks out of place. 
Man, do I really think Demon Prince is a top 5 boss in the entire series? I did not expect it to be here. I want to limit S tier to just the top 5 and this to just the bottom 5 in the series. I really did not expect Demon Prince to be here. But like in real time I discovered I actually really like the fight. Yeah, they're actually designed really well, I think. What do you think is better than Demon Prince that I have in A? The only thing I'm leaning towards is either Soul of Cinder or Manus. I don't think the... Maybe Maria? No, actually, definitely not Maria. I wouldn't trade, honestly. Yeah, like, I'm having a hard time thinking of what I'd replace it with. I, I think Soul of Cinder is probably the best case, though. Mm. You would say Soul of Cinder over Demon Prince. You know, I, I think Phase 2 on Soul of Cinder, while not bad per se, is it holds it back a little bit specifically the charged lightning attack that it throws in the air i think that's kind of a shitty attack and demon prince has zero shitty attacks yeah if phase two was just a little bit better i might replace it but i think phase two holds it back slightly And compared to Manus... Oh, but I really like Manus's dark magic. It just feels so threatening and powerful. Especially when you know what Manus is. Father of the Abyss and whatnot. No, but I think Demon Prince just has more going on. Yeah, in terms of gameplay, these are all more complex than Manus. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave S tier as it is. A tier. Nothing really looks out of place for me in A tier. I think that looks pretty good. I think the biggest debate is probably like D, C, and B. Does anything look out of place in B tier? Throne Guardian, Sanctuary Guardian, Sin, Kalanit, Fume Knight, Dragon Slayer Armor, Abyss Watchers. Bell Gargoyles? Let me think. Well, the Gargoyles are probably the weakest boss here in terms of gameplay. But then again, it is a really early game boss. Oh, but then again, Gascoin is also an early game boss. He could maybe even be the first, and I think he sits very comfortably in B tier. The werewolf phase is really cool, I think, plus the general atmosphere. Mm. Actually, yeah, I don't think... Bell Gargoyles belong in B, now that I see what else is there. Definitely upper C tier, I'd say, but yeah. I don't think it really competes with the other bosses I'm seeing here right now. Elena, I think, belongs in B tier, though. Yes, the summoning can be obnoxious at times. But even Velstet can be kind of manageable. Like, you can separate them, and Velstet is fairly slow. I don't find it that awful, although it can be annoying at times. Plus, I like her teleporting. I like her variety of spells. I think 
Elena sits pretty comfortably in B tier. You know, if it wasn't for, like, the tentacle spam attack at the end of the Abritas fight, I'd probably put it in A. But that, f like, super spasm that it does when it's close to dead, I think is kind of a cheap attack. I think that holds it back from being A. Otherwise, I think it's a really cool fight. Especially with the spell it uses. But that, like, spasm attack towards the end is, I think, the wrong kind of difficulty that feels more cheap than challenging in a creative way. Like, on my first playthrough, I had almost 50 vitality when I started this fight, and that attack still one-shot me in regular new game. Like, are you kidding me, FromSoft? That's dumb. Okay, C tier. Anything seem out of place in C tier? <laughs> mm. Honestly, I'm considering putting Fool's Idol in D. Like, looking at what else I have in C, I think it's definitely the weakest in terms of gameplay, but it has some, I think, fairly creative gimmicks. I don't know about that. Oh, also, I think I kind of overrated Sentry. I'm gonna put Sentry down to D, even considering New Game Plus. Because now that I think about it more, I think its arena is too small for that many enemies. Where the Lost Sinner New Game Plus extra enemies, I think, works okay. Because the arena is bigger. You haven't played Demon Souls? Oh, fair enough. You know what? Since Fool's Idol really only has two attacks underneath all the gimmicks, I don't think it really belongs in C tier, even though I think it's one of the better gimmick fights. I don't think they carry it that much to where it could go to C. Because looking at all these other bosses, they're at least fairly solid gameplay-wise. Actually, Priscilla isn't. <laughs> I think I might move Priscilla down to D. Just because, once again, she has such a limited moveset outside of the gimmicks. Whereas the rest of these are fairly decent and capable offensively. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I actually originally had Blood Starved Beast in C, but then I remembered the Poison Aura at the end, which I thought was a bit obnoxious and annoying, so I threw it down to D. The Poison Aura that just surrounds it, I think, is kind of cheap. It's not a good kind of difficulty, in my opinion. Anything else seem out of place here? Uh, I, I think C looks okay now. Nothing else really strikes me as being out of place. Except maybe Crystal Sage. I think I can keep Crystal Sage in C tier, though. D tier! Deacons, Seal Emissary, Grave Tender. Oh, I wish you'd played Demon Souls before, because I think Maiden Ashraya is kind of a controversial pick here. Okay, tell me, actually, the only good things I can say about this have to do with the atmosphere and lore. In terms of gameplay, it's absolutely abysmal. <laughs> you know what, I think I'm going to move this fight down to F tier. In terms of atmosphere, it's probably one of the most memorable in the series, but the gameplay is hot garbage there, and gameplay is the primary thing I'm considering here.
So I think I'm going to move Maiden Astrida down to F. Anything else seem out of place? I'd move Skelly Lord's to F. Mm, what do I have in F tier? <laughs> you know what? Skelly Lords can stay in D just because they're like so underwhelming that they're just kind of boring rather than annoying. All of these bosses are kind of annoying to a certain extent. Whereas for Skelly Lords, I kind of just roll my eyes and forget about them. These bosses actually all annoy me a little bit, or are just even shittier to a higher extent. Okay, does anything deserve to be in the bottom five above what I have here? I'm thinking Cat Duo is a C, but I'm fine with D because Horsefuck Valley thing. Honestly, I don't think Cat Duo should be a C. I don't think their attacks work really well together as a gank. They can, like, literally just overlap their shit in, like, undodgeable ways. In fact, the only thing that saved it from F is the fact that you could almost kill one of them before the second one arrives. But I just don't think their attacks sync together very well. Oh, and if I considered the Horsefuck Valley run-up, it would definitely be in the bottom tier. Hmm, I'm considering put putting... I don't know his name. Nicholas Cage in this tier. Because Dragon God, once you learn the path, can be fairly easy on a repeat playthrough. Where this guy can still be annoying with his constant running and his one-shot spell. I, I think he dethrones Dragon God in terms of shittiness. <laughs> Yeah, and his one-shot magic, which, by the way, in regular new game, with 40-plus vitality when I got here, I still got one-shot by it. Uh, does anything else in F tier out-shitty anything I have in the bottom tier? <laughs> Maybe Capra Demon or Moonlight Butterfly? Is it worse than any... Uh, no, this this is a very strong lineup of garbage in the bottom tier. <laughs> Those are the definite five. I I'm trying to think a bit more, though. Mm. Yeah, I think they're definitely the bottom five. Okay then, well, I think we're done. Yeah, Capra is absolutely abysmal, but you can use the stairs to split them up and, like, plunge Capra. Like, once you know what you're doing, I don't think it's nearly as annoying as any of these fights. Where these fights, even on repeat playthroughs, are just absolutely awful in every way. Same with Moonlight Butterfly. Actually, uh, do I hate Rom more than the Gargoyles, maybe? Hey, how familiar are you with Bloodborne? I've only played through it twice. I don't know if there's like a good way to get to Rom around the rest of the spiders to make that fight less shitty. Like, the Gargoyles can kind of be put down fairly easily. If you know what you're doing and have high DPS, you can take them out before they gank you. I don't know if such a thing is as likely with Rom. Like, for someone that actually really knows what they're doing in Bloodborne, I feel like it would be easier for them to maybe trivialize Rom than it would be for someone to trivialize the six gargoyles in DS2.
but I don't know about that. I'd have to have someone that's, like, super knowledgeable on Bloodborne to let me know. But if anything is going to out shitty the Gargoyles, I think it might be Rom, at least right now. But I only have... I'm not super knowledgeable in Bloodborne. Uh, fair enough. Well, I'll leave that up for later. Honestly, Rom might be worse. Rom is pure what the fuck from soft. Are you super familiar with Bloodborne? Because I've only done this twice, and I can't help but think that, like, a more experienced player probably has, like, good methods to trivialize the fight somewhat. They might be able to trivialize it easier than one would be able to the six gargoyles. So I don't know if... You got a solid 220 hours in it. Have you played DS2 also? Do you think Rama is worse than the six gargoyles fight? I definitely don't think Rom out shitties anything else though. But it might out shitty the six gargoyles. <laughs> That's the one thing I'm considering right now. The gargoyles aren't super aggressive. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Also, the gargoyles are optional, and you could come back at a later point, like towards the end game, and steamroll them before they can really gank you. That's not really an option with Rom. I think Rom actually out shitties the gargoyles now that I think about it. True reflections. Yeah, I think this makes more sense now that I think about it. <laughs> Alright, well, any final comments or anything? I think it looks pretty good now. Nothing really strikes me as being out of place. I think we can end it here. Unless... I'm trying to think. <laughs> no, the rest of the bosses in F tier, if you know what you're doing, can be kind of trivialized to the part where you minimize how annoying they are. As far as I know... It's a lot harder to do that with the five bosses I have at the bottom here. Yep, I think I'm satisfied with this list, actually. Let's just scroll through it one more time. Yeah, honestly, I think I like this list. I think it turned out pretty good. Well, hope you enjoyed this. I'll probably be back to Dark Souls 3 Invasion soon. I'll probably upload this to YouTube. And yeah, I'm ending it here.